Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for coming up for this session. We'll be talking about the efficient strategy about OpenStack backup. These are the outlines we are going to talk in this session. And uh, first, we'll introduce who we are. Myself, uh, Ghansiaman, I'm a software developer in NEC. I'm working in OpenStack upstream developer since uh, 2014. And I work in uh, QA and NOAA and doing some of the POC and backup and storage site. Yeah. Yep. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Abhinav, Abhinav Agrawal. Uh, I uh, work as a solutions architect with NEC Technologies. And uh, I'm, uh, from bottom of my heart, I'm a system software developer since 2005. Uh, primarily spent my time uh, with virtualization, cloud, big data, and IoT storage uh, technologies uh, in last uh, about 12 years. So you can catch me uh, on Twitter uh, with, at TechieAbhinav. So that's all about my introduction. Cool, thanks. So OpenStack backup. This is an open question, actually. If you are building a cloud, and uh, one of the key consideration is about backup and recovery, because we have a lot of resources in OpenStack, VM, volumes, we have database and configuration things. And uh, there are a lot of backup solutions available for clouds, but those are either specific to specific vendors, like Microsoft, VMware only. And uh, there are a lot of questions comes in mind when we think about the OpenStack backup. Like, can we use traditional backup solution for OpenStack? What all to backup for OpenStack? We have a lot of things. And uh, uh, what should be the our RPO, RTO, and TCO things all? So all these uh, questions and everything we'll be discussing in this session. So you know, the very first question, uh, maybe audience also would like to know, why we need to backup cloud? So all these questions, can you just summarize initially? So yeah. we can get the background. Thanks, Kansyam. I'm sure that uh, audience here would have similar questions when they are attending this session. Like, first of all, the very first question is like, why do we need to have backup of OpenStack? So I would like to you know summarize that with this slide. Uh, why OpenStack needs to be backed up? So you know there are uh, so uh, the primary reason for having backup is recovery from a data loss situation, and data loss can happen. Uh, due to multiple regions, uh, including uh, human error. So, you know, uh, your engineer, a single RM minus RF can cause uh, all your data lost. Or something overwritten by uh, engineer by mistake. So, you know, uh, you need some mechanism to recover from those kind of scenarios. There can be data corruptions through other ways, not just by human errors. So, uh, even in those scenarios, you need to have some mechanism to recover. and. None of the hardware in the world so far is 100% reliable. So even if it's 0.0001%, not you know guaranteed, then also you need to have uh, because your critical data is residing in the cloud. So you need to have some mechanism so that you can recover from there. Not only data loss, uh, but there are scenarios when your full system can go down, your full cloud can go down basically, and. Then, uh, so there are scenarios like, uh, for example, you're performing upgrade. So during upgrades, uh, some, something nasty happens, some power failure happens, some script is not working as you expect it, and then you're gone. So uh, typically, the best practices is that before update, uh, you take backup, and in case something bad happens, at least you have something to uh, you know, roll back your system to some stable state. Uh, there are very rare scenarios of uh, natural disaster, uh, like uh, some flood or something, some, some earthquake, those kind of scenarios. So uh, there are DR uh, solutions required for them, and uh, for DR also you need to have some backup. So not only this, uh, the recovery situations, but you, know, you add some business values. If your cloud is uh, basically planned, for, planned well for backup, so, so like you get competitive advantage uh, as compared to other providers uh, or other solutions that you're deploying. Uh, basically, you're ready for any kind of worst case scenario. Uh, so uh, you, you can survive uh, in, in any kind of, uh, uh, those kind of scenarios which are explained earlier. And then uh, for some of the industries, uh, backup is 
kind of compliance requirement. Uh, typically, industries like healthcare, uh, they are HIPAA compliance. They need to have, you know, uh, all the servers and all the data needs to be backed up. Uh, finance industry and, and many more. I mean, they need uh, backup as a compliance requirement. And if, if you have a cloud, which you say that is backup ready, uh, that's ready for those kind of industries. So, yeah, this was very first question. I guess uh, 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 I've uh, explained it that why backup is needed. Now, backup is needed. It's known from long time, uh, and it, there are multiple solutions. Uh, I call it. I call them traditional backup solutions. They are typically uh, uh, there for long ages, but now. Since we are talking about cloud, we need to know like why we need some something different for cloud. Why traditional backup solutions are not uh, a direct fit for cloud kind of uh, backup requirements. So the first and very uh, important thing is scalability. So as you know, like uh, OpenStack is designed to become scalable. It's like there is no theoretically there is no limit on number of nodes or storage and all. But uh, most of the backup solutions which are existing today, uh, traditional backups, they mostly have limitations either on number of generations, uh, I mean, the, num uh, the, the storage they can handle or number of servers they can handle. But so it's a contradictory uh, situation when for OpenStack you need a backup solution which, is, uh, which needs to be uh, limitless, especially for scalability kind of scenario. Then multi-tenancy. So, uh, your traditional backup uh, softwares, uh, they use, they, they manage users mostly through Active Directory uh, integration and, uh, and, and those kind of scenarios wherein OpenStack or any other cloud is for that matter is uh, multi-tenant. So you have, instead of users, you have group of users uh, as tenants residing on your cloud. And you need uh, solutions or your backup behavior different for each tenant. So one of the possible ways could be uh, to uh, have different backup uh, solution for each tenant. But then uh, you're losing on the management uh, cost and effort required, and you are asking your clients to you know, uh, take that burden. So but if, as a cloud provider, if you want to have a single uh, the backup under a single umbrella, uh, then also uh, you, know, you need to have uh, that considered in your backup plan. Next thing is uh, the context aware part. So uh, when I say context, uh, so in cloud, uh, you're not just backing up your user load, uh, like the VM or the volumes, but you also need to have a backup of information like uh, your VM uh, network settings, the configuration files of your uh, cloud services, some, some audit requirements, audit trails, and all those, those things are also required. So, the context that your application is running on cloud is important, and uh, that also needs to be saved. Then, uh, distributed architecture. So, okay, uh, most of the uh, current applications they are kind of distributed, clustered applications, wherein you know they are not. Uh, it is not simple as a, a single node application where when you are uh, taking backup, you have to maintain synergy between uh, services running in different nodes. So. Uh, typically, cloud uh, will come in under that kind of uh, applications would be running in the cloud, and you need to uh, handle those kind of uh, applications backup. And last but not least, uh, cloud resources, as I said, like uh, cloud-specific resources like configurations, logs, cloud DB, uh, or some uh, messaging, persistent data, all those things also need to be backed up. So, so Given all these, I think none of the traditional uh, backup is 100% uh, fit for cloud, uh, for, for uh, implementing cloud backup. And then we need to have some solution uh, which is way beyond this. So what happens uh, due to these challenges like, uh, or the requirements, what kind of challenges admins are facing in, in OpenStack? when they have to plan their backup, if they're not considering any automated solutions. So things like, uh, uh, as I said, like there is volume backup, there is uh, your VM backup, there is configuration backup. So all these things are uh, scattered. Your admin has to plan 
regular backup of all these things in a different manner. There is no single one click uh, solution uh, ready for admin uh, you know, to deploy. Then once the admin is doing, basically he's trying to write some scripts to take backup of logs, configurations, DB. It's, it's kind of error prone. Uh, he has to execute backups manually. He is not able to schedule them properly because of the lack of, so he's not able to utilize the features of a traditional backup. So, you know, there's no integrated user interface, uh, one-click backup kind of scenario. And during backup, if some failure happens, he has to handle all these things manually. So, looking at all these uh, challenges that your admin is facing, you need some solution which is uh, basically solving the purpose and uh, helping the admin. Uh, and now, while you're designing your cloud, you also need to consider uh, integrating such solutions in your uh, in your cloud itself. So, uh, Ghanshyam would be later explaining about uh, what all solutions are there. So, before I hand over it to Ghanshyam, uh, I would uh, add some of the key considerations admins should uh, 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 basically consider uh, while he's planning uh, the backup policies. So, the, so typically the standard backup best practices apply when you create uh, your open uh, OpenStack backup policy. So for example, uh, your tolerance to the failure or uh, how quickly you want to uh, recover would uh, drive your frequency of backup. And things like uh, how many backups you want to keep would depend on uh, the kind of storage you have, uh, what is the capacity uh, that you're holding. Uh, whether you want to keep your backup off-site or on-site would also depend on the kind of uh, failures you are anticipating. One of the most important thing uh, while planning backup is uh, you should also plan. See, only taking backup is not enough. I mean, you also have to ensure that once needed, you are able to restore and uh, make your system up and running. So you have to ensure that whatever backup you have taken is correctly taken. So, but uh, it's not possible that every backup all the time you are able to, you know, uh, uh, verify. So, you need to also define like how often you want to verify and test whether your backups were uh, correctly taken. Uh, the targets where you are storing your backups, they also need to be, uh, you know, reliable. So, you have to carefully choose uh, which target you are going to use for your backup target. For example, you want to use Ceph, you want to use Swift, some NFS target or, you know, those kind of different targets are available. Uh, you need to define uh, different matrices uh, like RPO, RTO, which are targeted uh, for the cloud you're operating. So all these things, uh, I think, uh, before uh, you consider any solution, you should uh, uh, take into uh, mind, and uh, then you should carefully choose uh, the solutions. Now I will hand it over to uh, uh, Ghanshyam for uh, further explanation of the solutions. Yeah, thanks, Arunav, for explaining the very important question why we need cloud backup. <clears throat> so now the question comes. Uh, what all things to back up for OpenStack Cloud? We have VM, we have volume, we have other configuration files, data files, log files, like what all to back up and what all are important. So on cloud resource side, we have configuration and log files. So every service is in OpenStack, they run against the set of configuration, which varies uh, their behavior between different cloud. So on your cloud, whatever configuration you have set, you wanted to back up those things. And similarly, log file you have. And then, obviously, the database, each OpenStack services have their own database and uh, their resources, information, and metadata, et cetera. On, on a user workload side, we have volume and uh, VM. So the user workload side, the VM and volume, they can be backed up as a complete workload, or you can back up like VM and the, all the test volume with them. So now on configuration, log file and database side. So configuration backup, we have configuration files, like by default, uh, the location is 
etc slash star like nova neutron cinder keystone etc or whatever you have configuration location in your cloud so from there you can take the backup you can have the file level backup for those similarly log file we have the log file on configured location like by default we say slash where slash log, log nova neutron cinder so wherever you have configured the log file location in your cloud, you can keep taking the backup. So depend on the how big your cloud is and how frequent the request comes on that. So log files may be very big. So it's uh, up to you guys that how many log files and uh, till long you want to keep those log files. <coughs> and on uh, DB backup, so we have a database for each OpenStack services, and those database can be on separate controller side, controller node, or they can have a separate MySQL server where they keep all the database for all services. So if it's on single node, you can take backup for all the database together, like for example, with MySQL dump tool, or if you want to take backup for particular service, for example, NOAA, you can take that. So yeah, MySQL dump, like we can question, uh, depends like for speed and reliability, this will not be good. So I'm not recommending this is the way, only way you should back up MySQL. You can uh, choose the other uh, solutions and your own backup utility for database. So these are the resources we should at least care about in OpenStack backup. And now let's discuss what's the essential features we need in cloud backup solution. Because backup is not just copying the data to some, from somewhere to somewhere. It needs a lot of things and we should consider a lot of features and factor when we are choosing the backup. So very first thing is kind of backup type, like full backup, then differential backup, incremental backup, file level backup. Yeah, differential backup, uh, we can say like still it has the redundant differences of backup with respect to the previous full backup. But yeah, incremental backup is uh, kind of must needed because you don't want to backup, you don't want to take full backup every time. You don't have that much of storage, nobody has, I think. So incremental backup is very needed. And file level backup, so particular, if particular file you want to backup and restore, so it should be, the feature should be there. Next is policy driven backup. So there are a lot of things you want to define in policy, like your retention policy and uh, about your uh, permission on particular storage, your data format, and uh, your encryption types on particular tenant or particular user. So those kind of things you can define in policies and uh, that backup solution should care or should consider those policy and automatically do backup according to those. Because each time you don't want to, as Abino explained, we, nobody want to do the manual backup. That's why we have the backup solution here. And uh, that's why we should have a, policy driven backup support in each backup solution so that you can define policy at each level. And obviously the automatic backup, the scheduling and uh, all these things you can, the automatic you can do if you want to like uh, schedule backup overnight or weekend or particular time, you should be able to do that. Then we have on uh, restore side, So restore, yeah, one click, like you have, we have backed up 100 of VM, 1,000 of VM. We don't want to restore it one by one. Or for example, I have a particular tenant and I have backed up the complete data of the tenant. So I should be able to restore it completely. So one click restore should be there, which restore everything, whatever you have backed up. And then selective restore, that is also very important. 
because if I have like under one tenant or as a comp single workload, I have uh, backed up a thousand of VM and uh, my one VM got corrupted, so I want to restore that VM only. So I should be able to select the particular VM or resource from a complete workload or tenant backup and restore that. Then, yes, the file level recovery, as I said, if particular file we want to restore or recover, we should be able to do because if I, I got one file corrupted and want to restore it, I don't want to back restore the complete image and then boot the VM and then restore it from there. So it should be able, like, we should be able to map the backed up image and from there I can choose the single file or particular file to restore. So next we have deduplication, that is very, very important. Because uh, nowadays, as, as I said, nobody has uh, too much storage. Storage is very important. So in any kind of storage, any kind of data we store, we, we, we want deduplication. And uh, in, same in the case of backup restore also. So with deduplication, we can save a lot of storage, bandwidth, so that is really important. <clears throat> On similar note, we have a data compression. So if we can save some space with compression technology, that is also good. Next, uh, data security. So that is uh, all up to cloud provider, or depends on the user, PM they want to backup. So they want to provide a data security or not, kind of some authorization, authentication things, or at least encryption way of the data. But there are trade-off, like if you uh, support the encryption things, obviously the, it, will, it makes backup and restore slow, because it has to encrypt and decrypt the data. So it's, yeah, if we have a use case of much data security, so the backup solution should provide the encryption support. And next, uh, we have multi-tenancy. As uh, you know, I explained why traditional backup cannot be used, and one of the factor was the multi-tenancy in OpenStack, which is uh, very nice and uh, uh, much needed. So each solution should backup each tenant uh, resources or workload with, uh, with, by providing the isolation between tenants. It should not be like, I have backed up one tenant and restoring there, I'm changing, modifying, or disturbing the other tenant resources. So that should not be there. So the tenant isolation should be taken care of while doing the backup and resources. Next, uh, non-disruptive, yeah. So if I'm using VM volume and my cloud provider want to take backup, okay, you can do backup, but don't ask me to stop the services or any downtime. So that's what we want to do. So it should be non-disruptive. So irrespective of VM or volume downtime or read write stop, the backup should work. Next, geolocation. So yeah, we can locally backup on NFS storage or anywhere, but still due to other lot of factor, we want to have one backup copy or at least the backup on the remote side or other geographic location. So if backup solution have support for this, that is really nice. Next we have scalability. So OpenStack, as we know, it can be scale out at any level. It can be of uh, hundred node or thousand of node or million nodes. So, and initially we don't know how much we need. So maybe cloud keep growing, keep scale out. So backup solution, whatever we choose, it should be scalable. So it's not like you just work for 1000 VM and after that, okay, there's something, some issues. So it should not be there. So as OpenStack is scalable, the backup solution should be scalable. 
and yeah, unlimited data transfer. So there should not be any limit on data transfer if I have very heavy VM or heavy volume of one TB or anything. So there should not be like there is a limited data transfer things there and which makes my backup and restore very slow. And this is very important, Gesto as agent, most of the traditional backup has uh, the, some agent installed on the particular resource VM or on that directory which you want to backup. So in case of OpenStack, we don't want any agent to be installed on VM because that makes uh, slow. Even because we know the when we take the back image uh, VM backup, so the image of the backup lies under the virtualization layer on host. So if I trigger backup, it goes to VM, some agent there, it goes triggered again at the down. In virtualization layer of host, get the data images, then it goes all the, there. So that obviously we don't need and we don't want. So there should not be any guest OS agent required for backup so solution. Just would like to add one more point uh, about the agentless requirement. So it's not only, uh, I mean, the performance is definitely one of the requirements, but uh, uh, other than that, scalability is also affected uh, if you need to install agents on every VM. So basically, uh, if you don't need agents to be installed on user, load, user workload or uh, user VMs, uh, you can scale your cloud uh, in, uh, I mean, independent of your uh, backup requirements. So that is one of the key uh, requirements to make your backup architecture such that you don't need to have agents running on each VM. Yeah, that's, so that's very it. true. And next, the resource requirement by the backup solution. It's not be there, it need 50% of your cloud resources to back up your cloud. So as minimum as required is always good. And next, last but not the least is user interface. So admin or anyone who is doing the backup, they don't want any complex interface or they don't want to have a lot of internal technical knowledge of how that solution or software works. So as simple, as interface for that backup solution is good. So those are the essential features we actually look for backup solution in case of OpenStack backup. And next, uh, we'll go through what all we have in market currently. So the first we'll uh, go with the Trilio Vault. So on Trilio Vault, is a backup and recovery solution for OpenStack from Trilio Data. And it provides multi-tenancy, self-service, policy-based solution. And uh, yes, no agent on guest. It's scalable, non-disruptive, and it provides point-in-time backup of data and configuration. And yeah, on restore, one-click restore, you can do. You can do selective restore also and file-level restore also. And uh, it provides a flexibility of uh, selecting, selectively restoring the VM on different network or different uh, availability zone or different cloud, region or different cloud. So there might be scenario like uh, I have, like in my cloud, I have multiple compute node in multiple availability zone. So I have backed up uh, one VM from one compute node under is at say XYZ, and while restoring, I don't want to restore that on the same compute node because that compute node has gone bad. So I should be able to restore that backed up VM in different compute node under different availability zone. Or by selecting the availability zone, I should be able to restore that in different uh, compute node. So that is also present here, and then yeah, file level backup and restore support. And uh, they have backup storage support on NFS, Ceph, Swift, and AWS. And uh, next, I got this uh, Trilio architecture from Trilio team. It's very simple and easy to explain. So I will not go deep into this architecture. What I want, uh, why I included this architecture here to understand from deployment point of view what all things 
we have to install and where we have to install and how they work at very high level so that we can understand how and how much uh, hardware resources or how complex they are, et cetera. So on Trilio architecture, in Trilio Vault, on the NOAA and Horizon side, we have Trilio Vault API and plugin, Horizon plugin. So on the same OpenStack dashboard or whatever you have dashboard, so you can have the integrated UI. And then you have Trilio data mover on each compute node. And you have Trilio Vault. You can install it on VM or physical server. So what happens when you trigger backup or restore from uh, uh, Horizon? So it goes to the Trilio Vault, and it trigger data mover on compute node to get the backup of those VM, and then they do the backup on their selective restore, like uh, storage on NFS, Swift, or Chef, or AWS, whatever it is. So that's how it works. There is no agent on VM, or there is no other complexity. So we have done the functional POC on Trilio data, and it went very well. But the performance POC and DR things is in progress. And if you want to know more about Trilio data, we have a couple of sessions tomorrow or day after tomorrow also. So next we have Freezer. So you might know this. We have this as an OpenStack project. So Freezer is a distributed backup, restore, and disaster recovery as a service platform. So this is an OpenStack project. And the key components are Freezer scheduler, agent, web UI, and Freezer API. So it does, we'll explain what all component are installed where and what all they do. And backup file level using point in time snapshot and uh, multiple compression algorithm they have and synchronizing backup and restoring on multiple node. So this is the architecture of Freezer from, yeah, you can get it from GitHub, it's OpenStack. And uh, so as we explained, it has four key component. So freezer scheduler, schedule, freezer scheduler and freezer agent, they get installed on node, either VM or physical server, from where you want to execute the backup. So what freezer scheduler does, it retrieves the, it's a daemon, and it's retrieved the data from freezer API, and uh, it's in the form of job, job template you can define. You can define the action inside the job, what all you need to do, what VM you want to back up, what all policies and all those things. So it retrieves the data from uh, Freezer API and uh, trigger the jobs and uh, Freezer agent to execute uh, those actions and the job. And Freezer agent then it execute, uh, either it, it can be executed standalone or by the scheduler and it provide the uh, flexible way to execute the backup, restore, and other action on running system. And then Freezer API is used to store the uh, metadata and it provided it to the Horizon GUI and talking with scheduler and all. And uh, next we have Converture. So this is an open stack. This is backup for open stack and KVM. So only it is for KVM. Open stack with KVM only, but yeah, if you have that uh, environment, you can use it. So it do automated policy based backup, and uh, yeah, it has a full and incremental backup. And uh, their storage target, yes, yeah, so with TC2, S3, uh, and as local or remotely, you can do with SSH. They have compression option, retention policy, scheduling policy, and encryption option. But as I said, this is only for KVM, so it doesn't support much other hypervisor. So next is RQ. So this is the backup solution from Evnix. It's a backup restore utility for OpenStack with STN. And we do STN backup restore, policy-based backup with automation. Then you can customize the policies and yeah, off-site uh, off application you can do for DR things. 
and uh, we do full VM backup and at uh, tnt level backup also. So at all together, you can back up the complete tnt data. So whatever network and uh, VMs and everything you have, you can back up together. And it does uh, full backup and no agent in this. So these are the four solution. One is only for KVM. So four solution we have currently, which can do the OpenStack backup. And we have these metrics from our POC and investigation, which uh, those feature I already covered, so I'm not going to ex going each and every one for each and all solution. So you can refer those uh, even later. So it's the uh, same continuation. Now we'll summarize those. So as we know, backup recovery is uh, integral part of OpenStack cloud. We cannot say this is the cloud and uh, we don't need backup. No, we need backup in various scenarios. And uh, backing up solution in a traditional backup way is not an option, as we explained. Traditional backups are way behind from what we need for cloud and or OpenStack. And uh, OpenStack backup solution, as we explained, like we have currently four solution, I think, see, before two, three years, we didn't have much. So those have merged a lot since a few years. And uh, the feature still missing in existing solution or in progress maybe. One is like network failure handling, like when I do the backup and it's very heavy backup and at the like 90% state network failure happen and again I have to take the backup from scratch or starting, that's not good. So that should be there, some failure handling, network failure handling, or some mechanism to resume the backup whenever you fix the network should be there. Trilio data has uh, some uh, default uh, retry mechanism, but that's not configurable as of now, and I think it will be in their roadmap somewhere. And then deduplication. So many solutions, they say like deduplication, they don't need because they do incremental backup. Uh, because uh, it does only incremental backup and why need to, as I explained, deduplication is still needed because in incremental backup also we can have a lot of duplicate data. And that depends on how big cloud we backup and all. So those are the things. And uh, yeah, we summarize uh, with those. So we have Mike there, so if you have any question, please ask. Uh, so with OpenStack, they do, or they do backup on OpenStack? Yeah, I, I, I don't know with that, actually. So because uh, uh, You're talking we about workload so on OpenStack, it's fine. But what we're talking about is yeah. backup of cloud itself. Because other backup so solution, we and other they do the yeah, so backup on OpenStack, like on Swift. Here we are talking backing of the OpenStack cloud. So as I explained earlier in my slides, like uh, backup of workload is different from backup of cloud. Yeah. So workload. So there are traditional backup uh, softwares available, not only Commvault, but there are various others who are offering uh, backup for workload only, right? But in this session, we were uh, trying to focus more on the needs for backup of cloud itself. Hmm. And how is it different from because traditional backup? A lot of uh, traditional backup, they're moving from doing backup on tape towards the backing of on cloud. That is the separate thing. But cloud itself, how we can backup so that only those four we have. Yep. Great. Great, thank you. So quick question then. So it sounds like you're differentiating the infrastructure from the workloads, the applications uh, that we're running in our environments. Yeah. What are your thoughts on bringing those two together? Because ultimately to recover my business, I have to recover the cloud and have a consistent recovery of the workload. Um, I think uh, yeah. this, uh, uh, we are not saying that we are isolating workload and uh, the infrastructure part. We are. Uh, we are talking about a solution which takes care of both uh, together. So, so yeah, for example, like in VM, <coughs> we have like 
full context in that, what all network setting is there, what all security group was attached, and all volume. So as a complete workload, when we say, so some of the solution, like uh, we did the, with the Trilio, so they do the complete backup of complete OpenStack. So say, for example, I have VM1 with security group 1, 2, 3 volume attached, 1 volume bootable, I backup, and then I restore. So every setting of all security group, VM, volume, everything will be same as before. Data and it's capturing all of exactly. the workload payload data, if you want yes. to think of it, both in the ephemeral storage as well as the underlying volumes that may be supporting. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Yes. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, because if they do separately, then it's more towards the traditional backup. Yeah. Same thing what Commodore does. Uh -huh. if all the metadata and all the volumes. Okay. Maybe we can discuss with you because yeah, as thanks. far as it will be nice to get to know more solution. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so uh, regarding OpenStack Freezer, I believe that it's quite easy to you know there are uh, 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 steps to uh, basically take a backup of a file or a uh, or a DB or a or a um, uh, or, or a VM. Mm -hmm. So uh, in your experience, what are the steps uh, that we can take to use Freezer for taking backup of the whole cloud that is restorable? Because uh, mm -hmm. these standard uh, uh, options in there are... Yeah, the one very essential things like we discussed, there should be the complete workload backup with full context of the VM and volume. So that is the one we should care. Like in Zob, we can uh, define the action with particular VM we want to uh, backup with all the forces. VM, I'm talking about uh, back, uh, doing a backup of, uh, for the whole cloud. Uh, as a, the infrastructure backup, not the uh, VM uh, workload backup. So you mean the particular VM backup with complete? Uh, no, the infrastructure backup. Yeah, so uh -huh. Freezer is a you know kind of backup as a service solution, which gives you a backup of uh, uh, any kind of resource, including databases, including yeah, your uh, VM, or including your service at all, right? So uh, I think it's uh, pretty easy. I mean, you just have to combine those APIs, and uh, you know, uh, once you have listed those resources. So I think it's lacking in uh, that uh, part as of now that it doesn't have a single click cloud backup, uh, the whole cloud backup okay. uh, yeah, integrated in uh, Freezer. But uh, I think implementing that is not a daunting or challenging task. So uh, um, is it possible to do, to do that with a policy file? Yes, uh, I yeah. think. I think it should okay. be. Okay, that's one of the things. Yeah, please see how out of time, but yeah. All right, so uh, we're using Galera on our control plane, and I, uh -huh. my uh, expertise is not super there where it comes to that. Is that backup, you know, any different? It's MySQL clustered, right? So is that backup process going to be different, or were those products you talked about support, you know, a database uh, that's, that's uh, mm -hmm. handled with Galera, or is it for single control plane? Um, uh, some solutions. of them they have single control things with also like with freezer and database you can do separately but yeah internally like what tax internally they use and what efficient that uh, uh, we no, don't know much so it's all at the single plane you can do the da complete database uh, uh, backup also okay. yeah okay thank you yeah thanks oh sorry sorry very quick question yep uh, which backup tool would you most recommend and why? Yeah, so as we discussed all essential features <laughs> and the matrix things, so still we did only functional POC on Trilio and Freezer things, oh. so Trilio went to all good yeah. and Freezer also, but the performance POC and DR thing, we are still in progress. So it's like uh, we have the features available in each solution and up to like SLA and RPO, RTO, we can uh, I think there is no the single question. It's a tricky question, and uh, to answer yeah. it tricky way, I would say there is no single uh, backup solution I would recommend for all kind of scenarios. Uh, you have to evaluate them uh, based on your need. I mean, so for example, uh, if, if uh, as we are discussing, like if for Freezer, uh, if you have to write something on top of this, but for Trilio, if you, al you already have that, probably you can go for that. I mean, it's not recommended as of yeah. now from our side. You have to evaluate their features and your needs, match them, and you know, yeah. you, you get the answer. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. I have a question. Okay. Uh, thank you for your session. That was very excellent. The question is that you mentioned four different uh, solutions for this backup. 
but does NEC also offer any kind of backup solution? Uh, <laughs> yeah, currently, no. So but actually, uh, uh, okay, uh, sorry Ghansyam, let yeah. me interrupt, but NEC has solutions on the storage side, target side of it. I mean, uh, NEC has a product called HydraStore, okay. uh, which can be used as a backup target. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't have a control plane software for, uh, uh, you know, uh, the backup part of it uh, as of now. But uh, most likely they are planning uh, to have that kind of, uh, so yeah. uh, the, uh, it could be from the partner ecosystem, it could be from uh, their own, but it's not yet final. So for, for target part, they have. Yes. Thank you. Thanks. For your uh, backups there, um, is there any quiescing that you guys do for the backups? Sorry? Can any you? kind of quiescing, like a flush to the file systems before you do the backups? Flushing the file system? Uh, no. Yeah, I mean, our system, it uses a database, but the database uh -huh. actually uses the NTFS file system for the structure of it. Um, so in, like in VMware, we'll call a quiesce on the database before we back it up. So we're doing a, like a VM snapshot, we'll do a quiesce on it. Um, I don't know if any of those four that you mentioned have a quiesce option. I think no, not as of now. Okay. But that but would be a good uh, feature yeah, required. That's, uh, nice yeah. It would be, yeah. Yeah, yeah that thank would you. be great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks everyone for joining the session. Thank you. Thank you very much.